Springboard Roadshow Foundation. Legacy and legacy. Be inspired. Be motivated. Be challenged. I am happy to share with you a few ideas on going global. When we say we are going global, what do we mean when we say we are going global? So I tried to speak to a few people and search a bit about what we mean when we say we are going global. And there are different people, different ways of going global, but at the end of it all, going global is simply affecting the world with an idea that you have, with a product that you have, with a service that you can offer, or with a brand that you have developed. Affecting the world with it. And you know, too often by our socialization, we as Ghanaians, and for those of us who are fanties, we are always encouraged to be in our own small little corner, our own small little world. But this evening, we want to have a conversation about going global, affecting the world, the entire world, with an idea, with a product, with a service, or with a brand. And I chose just two examples to share with you. One is a brand of a vehicle known as Toyota. How many of you know Toyota? Toyota today is a brand that has gone global. After many years of work building upon little successes, the whole world has been affected by the Toyota brand. But how did it happen? Toyota is a brand. It's a product as well for a vehicle. And it's gone global over some 60 years or so. Another thing that has gone global that I want to share with you or draw your attention to is an idea. A certain idea. Sometimes people don't take brands alone global. Sometimes they take a service global. A bank called Zenith Bank started somewhere in Nigeria. They are in Ghana and other parts of Africa and indeed parts of Europe. And they are going global. That's a service. They are taking banking service global. Some people take a product, like we talked about, the car, global. Some also take an idea. And the idea you see that I've just put up on that screen is an idea that I'm sure you have all heard or talked about over and over again. Uh, it's the idea that they call the can-do spirit. Yes, we can. One young man, you know, decided to brave the odds and run for the presidency of the U.S. And even when all the odds were against him, he had a certain idea. The idea of the can-do spirit. The idea that we can and he found a way of selling that idea to everybody who cared to listen and he took that idea global so going global is simply about taking something from a certain locality maybe a product maybe a brand maybe an idea maybe a service and taking it global but why do we even need to spend time talking about going global of all the things we could have talked about on the Springboard Roadshow this year. Why have we elected to spend time thinking or talking about going global? And I decided to share about four reasons for which we are talking about this tonight. Number one, today's world, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you think it's true or not, today's world is a global village. There are people who sit in Dubai and have meetings with people in Asia, Europe, and Africa at the same time. Take decisions, transfer money, make things happen. There are people who sit in Zimbabwe and sell products to people in Europe and in China. There are people who sit in China who manufacture chairs for your school administration to buy and for you to pay fees for. Whether you like it or not, today's world has gone global. And so you will be deceiving yourself, we will be deceiving ourselves if we continue to think within the small spaces that we have been socialized to think within. To think within the small corners that we have been brought up to think within. I grew up in Mataiko in Accra. I grew up in Koforidio and then we moved to Mataiko in Accra. If today I restrict my thinking to Mataiko in Accra or even Accra alone, I'm deceiving myself, I'm limiting my potential. Because the world today is a global village. You know everybody who is doing something out there on the world stage. Why? Because now because of technology we are all connected. And this world has become a global village. And therefore, whatever you are doing, 
you are not just competing with the next businessman or the next guy two streets away you are competing with somebody probably in singapore or in nigeria or in south africa so it is important that at the stage we start to think about going global because today's world is a global village are we all on one page the second reason for which it's important to think about going global is that large markets bring large results and therefore it's important for you to start thinking about large markets and to start thinking volumes and large results if i produce water what we all call mineral water one bottle of water and the total population of ghana is 25 million people and assuming i'm able to sell my one bottle of water at a margin of one cd per bottle and everybody in ghana wants to buy one bottle what will happen at the end of the year i'll make 25 million ghana cities that's a lot of money right but just think about it for a moment if we opened up west africa and i was thinking not even global but i was thinking regional west africa and i was selling my one bottle to about 500 million people across west africa how much do you think i'll be making 500 million large markets bring large results and over the years we have spent a lot of time and if you follow the trend of ghanaian businesses we've spent a lot of time doing business to affect two three small areas but if we begin to think about large markets we begin to think about large results and the best time to do that is now as we are sowing the seeds for our future and that's why at this stage it's important to think about going global so that we can think about penetrating large markets and getting large results you are with me the third reason for which i think we should think global is that if you can make impact why do you want to make small impact when you can make global impact some decades ago if you wanted to communicate with people the best thing you could do was to write a letter or a telegram and post it in your country and chances are they'll put it on a ship or an aircraft and send it to somebody at some address that you were hoping to reach today because of technology they no longer spend time doing that you just get onto the internet you click a few buttons and you can send an email you can send an invoice you can send things to people around the world what it means is that the kind of impact you could have made in a very small corner if you put in the work and the effort you can make global impact impact around the world take a mark zuckerberg take many of these entertainment stars who do music that literally penetrates every part of the world everywhere you go everybody's singing their song so if it lies within you to make impact in a little small corner in uh, market circle here then if you begin to think global and you understand the things that take brands and products and ideas and services global chances are you can make impact globally you understand and the final reason for which i think we should talk about going global this evening is that if other people have gone global then you can go global too there's no difference between the guy sitting in florida and you sitting here absolutely no difference he's got one head two ears one nose two eyeballs one mouth one heart two lungs just like you there are just a few principles he's applying and he's going global and he's impacting the world and maybe if you learn it you can also impact the world we're on one page so one of the questions i want to ask is what does it take to go global with anything you are doing if it's a product that you can produce if it's a particular service that you can offer if it's a particular idea that you have what does it take to go global there are many ideas many theories about going global but tonight i just want to share two with you two just two two things to bear in mind two things to cultivate if you want to go global number one the things that very often are able to penetrate the world cut across from one country to another from one continent to another impact lives across the world is something that is unique if it is something that everybody everywhere can do you won't go global with it because by the time you get to asia 
Somebody's doing it there already. It's as easy as one, two, three. But if you find something that is unique, something that pretty often many people haven't spent time to think about, to plan about, to process, chances are you can go global with it. I chose as an illustration the Edinkra symbol or the Edinkra symbols of Ghana. In my few years of travel, I must confess to you, I haven't quite seen any other country that has Edinkra symbols. And they are symbols we use to represent various things. Various little things that in our traditional cultural Ghanaian society we see, we talk about, it makes meaning to us, but we overlook. I suggest to you this evening that it is things as unique as the Edinkra symbol, things that you naturally wouldn't find any other part of the world having, that if you are able to capture properly, position properly, brand properly, you can take global. Let me give you an example. Banking. Banking is a service that almost everywhere in the world, you find somebody doing something of that kind. Even the Bible talks about loan sharks in those days. So it's been there for a while now. And I'm sure for those who have followed the banking scene in Ghana, you would notice how even the traditional Ghanaian banks have now had to change their behavior ever since banks like the Zenith banks and some of the other banks entered the Ghanaian market. Why? Because they brought something unique to the banking landscape. And therefore, they were able to enter the Ghanaian market and do things that traditional Ghanaian banks were not doing. And when, when, when traditional Ghanaian banks realized that they were stealing the market away or winning the market, they had to wake up and try and catch up with the game. I suggest to you tonight that if you are going to go global, you need to think about something unique that is not easy to find all over the world. Take a concept like Facebook. The young man Zuckerberg sat down and said, well, people are sending emails back and forth. How about if I created a certain social media platform where people can go and post their stories and update their profiles and uh, find ways of connecting with people who are just like them? And what I'll do is that, based on the uh, algorithm or the program I will write, if you get onto the web and you are always searching for football and you have interest in football and football and football, and he also has interest in football and football and football, the football advertising companies can easily find you and advertise to you directly at a lower cost instead of going to TV or radio and making noise to people who don't even like football. He brought something unique to advertising. Many people get swallowed into the thinking that, oh, Facebook is a social connecting tool. No, it's an advertising platform. And he uses all of us to populate the data. We go on, we load our pictures, we are connecting with friends, sending emails, but what we are doing is that we are providing him data about our likes and our dislikes so that he can sell that data to advertisers. So you notice that when you go on your Facebook page, you see some advert about some university somewhere because chances are when you uploaded your data, you said you were a student. And so he's able to now stream through advertisers of educational institutions or educational products and bring them to you and charge them something for that. He brought something unique to the advertising world. And that's why almost everybody here, who doesn't have a Facebook account? You don't have one. Bless you. You should try and get one sometime soon. But that is why many of us get onto Facebook because it's been designed in a unique way that gets us to think we are just connecting with friends and just logging on and checking people's updates and loading their photos but he's built a strong business model behind it that is unique. And he's been able to go global with it because in many parts of the whole world, when you go, people are not thinking like that. But whatever you are designing that is unique, if it's a product, if it's a service, if it's an idea, maybe it's music, whatever it is, it shouldn't just be unique because there are unique things that are useless. Do you agree with me? Things that are unique but are of utterly no use to anybody. But it should be unique and it should be globally useful to people's lives. I found my class four teacher on Facebook. I did. I found her on Facebook. You know, she had loaded her photos and other things. And some of my old classmates now started connecting. And before we realized, we had formed, you know, our old class four group on Facebook. 
And so today we connect and go for parties here and there along one another. One is looking for a job. Somebody is linking him here. It's become useful to our lives. And if it is unique and it becomes useful to somebody's life, chances are it will be useful to someone else's life at some other part of the world. To go global, like I said, there are many ideas. But two things I want to leave with you is that you have to find something that is unique and something that is globally useful. I depicted it with a glass of water. I suggest, and when I'm speaking to some of my business clients, people come up with fantastic business ideas. And you ask them that, what is the market for this business? And they struggle to tell you. Especially with the young ones. Many of us come up with nice ideas. Oh, when I grow up, I want to do this. But then we ask you, what's the market for this particular idea? How is it useful to people's lives? And it becomes difficult to answer that question. I depicted it with, with, with a bottle of water, a glass of water. Every human being on this planet drinks water. Whatever it is that you are designing that you hope to go global with, it must be as useful as a glass of water. Something that cuts across everybody everywhere in this world. If it's unique and it cuts across, chances are you can go global with it. If you can go global with it, you can make impact with it. You can hit large markets with it. You can make large impact with it. The next thing I want us to consider is what the costs are if you want to go global. So now we know what it takes to go global. There are many things that are required if you want to go global. But what are the costs if you want to go global? Many a time, many people think or argue or say that the biggest problem with business anywhere in the world is what? Money. True or false? You know when J says they say problems affecting so lack of capital. This is a lack of capital. Everywhere you go, they say lack of capital. But I submit to you this evening that is not true. If you have a brilliant idea, well thought through, I've come to know that you find money to back it to make it happen. But that's a different conversation for another day. I want to tie it in with what the costs are. The very first cost that you need to count, that you need to overcome, if you want to go global, having identified what it is that you want to take global, if it's a talent you have, it's, uh, if it's a gift you have, the very first thing that you have to do is to look within for that gift or that talent. You would find that everybody who has gone global with something very often had to look within themselves to find that thing that comes to them naturally and others find difficult to do. If I asked you to take out a paper and to write on it, and maybe you should do that test at some point, write that one thing that you can do so easily that other people find difficult to do, I suggest to you that that's the beginning of identifying your gift or your talent that you can take global. Gift will be speaking to you shortly. And she has a natural gift when it comes to communication. She didn't have to go and look for a gold mine to go global. Or some wild idea to go global. She just needed to look within, tap into that gift. Work it out. And we'll talk about what it takes to work it out. To work it out. And today she's on television networks in Europe and other parts of the world. She has gone global. With what? With a gift within her. The very first cost is the cost of looking within for your gift. That time, whether it will take you six months or two years or four years or five years, to sit down and think and realize what comes to you naturally that other people find difficult to do. Lionel Messi is a global brand today. What comes to him naturally? Football. And he's taking it global. Rihanna is a big brand on the world stage today. What comes to her naturally? Music. And she's on the world stage. Richard Branson is a global brand. What comes to him naturally? Business. He's on the world stage. There is something inside of you that if you spend some time considering, you would realize it's a natural gift that you can take global. But it's not everybody who identifies that gift that, that is able to go global with it. True or false? So what makes the difference? One of the major differences is the ability to sharpen your blades. Have you seen somebody with a blunt cutlass trying to weed before? It's a very difficult job. 
those in senior high school will tell you if your senior gives you a blunt cutlass and says go and weed it's a very difficult punishment to overcome but it is because that blade is not sharpened whatever exercise or endeavor you want to embark upon you need to sharpen your blade the best music stars are the ones who spend a lot of time writing lyrics or rehearsing their voices preparing their stage craft if you do not sharpen your blades in whatever area you are I suggest to you that when that day comes that you have an opportunity to take it global you can't even take it global look within you there's something something that you can do very easily that other people even your siblings find it difficult to do and when you find that thing the first thing to do is to sharpen your blades work at it before gold becomes gold what do they do they put it through the fire work at it sharpen it you want to be the best athlete you've got to run and rehearse you want to be the best writer you've got to keep writing you want to be the best communicator you've got to rehearse it over and over and over again sharpen your blades if it's business that you are interested in you've got to start early make the mistakes lose money get defrauded and get your act together you've got to sharpen your blades the earlier you start sharpening your blades the better you get at it and the higher your chances of going global with it number three is something that people very often overlook and i see it and i talk about it everywhere i go hard work hard work too often too many of us are too lazy we do it a little we try once or twice it doesn't work out and we give up the people who succeed they don't do anything spectacular they don't do anything wild they work hard they find their gift they sharpen their blades and they work hard at it they work hard at it they work hard at it they try every day they try every day they rise and they fall they keep at it and before you realize they are very sharp at it so you've got to work hard find that gift sharpen your blades and work hard at it like i said whatever it is start telling make the mistakes but keep at it until you get the results you are looking for the fourth thing you need to do if you want to count those costs is to network. There are people here in this room who in the next 5-10 years you'll be amazed to meet elsewhere. If you look down on them today, <laughs> you will be doing yourself a great deal of harm. Building networks and connecting with people is one of the best things that human beings can do. Animals operate on instinct. We operate on intelligence. Therefore, if you have that intelligence and you are meeting people, you are connecting with people, build a network of people. If you want an example, take a look at all our presidents who have come in the last four, five terms. And you notice that in everybody's government, you know the people they go for, they are trusted hands, they are friends, people who are loyal to them, people who they can count on. How many of them do you see go abroad and say, I've heard there's some sharp guy at Harvard Business School, come and do this job for me? No. You look for people who you can people who you have networked with over the years and therefore if you are networking with the right people over the years people who share the kind of vision you share you will be building the network required to take you global gifty told the story on radio this evening as i was listening to her she says she was there when somebody called her and said you know this show of yours would you like to bring it out here a friend of mine was telling me a story yesterday that uh, as we were doing our programming on uh, 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 the Joy News channel on TV during the election, somebody called from Europe and said, you know, I have a channel on Sky News. Would you guys like to put your thing here? Why? If somebody doesn't know you, how is he going to call you and put that, that, that connection through? You've got to network. Build that connection. And always keep the big picture in mind. What's the big goal? Maybe you want to go global with a little chocolate factory. If you want to go global with a little chocolate factory as you identify that gift and you sharpen your blades and you work hard at it and you start building the networks always keep the big picture in mind you know why because there are things that very often throw us off the course and if you don't take care there are very simple things that can knock you off the road but one of the things you want to do when you want to go global is to always keep the big picture in mind what are the rewards of going global if today you were able to identify that thing, sharpen your blades, work hard at it, build a strong network, and work keeping the big picture in mind, what are the rewards in, in, in store for you? Number one, like I said, large markets bring large results. Chances are you will make a lot of money. If you're selling one bottle of water and there are 500 million people across West Africa or Africa who are buying it, 
as against you doing your small water factory and servicing a few people around half a city area, chances are you will make a lot more money. People who go global so you know, come with a lot of fame, and fame comes with its own challenges as well. But above all, when you go global, you make impact globally. Do something that will impact the world. Something that will make the world stop and mention your name and feel that you were here. At some point in time, your foot touched this earth. Do something. Make some impact globally. And when you do that, one of the things you'll be doing is that you'll be putting Ghana on the world stage. You're a Ghanaian. I'm happy you're a Ghanaian. But if you don't stop thinking within your small little Mataiko corner, or Kofoedia corner, or Takrade Market Circle corner, you won't get to that point where you can make that impact on the global stage and also knock Ghana on that world stage. There are rewards for going global. And I encourage you this evening to think about it and to see how best you can identify whatever it is you are going to take global. I don't know what you are going to take global. I know what I want to take global. But I'll be happy if you spend some time introspecting and finding out what you want to take global and put Ghana on the world stage. My question is it in our nature as Ghanaians to go global? Here in Ghana, we know. I'm a fanti. I'm not shy about it. Fanties, you know, we. Chale. Your parents wants them. Like to be in our own little corner. And then there are those who are bold. And, so take a look at Ghanaians. Is it in our nature to go global? And sometimes people say, oh, you know, Ghanaians, it's not in our nature to go global. We like our own small little corner like that. Maybe it's true. But the example of some persons, and I had so many examples, but I just chose to use one as an illustration. The example of some persons who have gone ahead of us should burn some fire within your belly that you can go global and make impact on the world stage with something significant. You too can shake the world with something that would change people's minds, something that would change economies, something that would create some jobs, something that would make Ghana a reference point. Is it in our nature as Ghanaians to go global? I think so. We may not have had many examples, but I think so. This man has demonstrated to us that even in civil service, being a civil servant, this is an international civil servant, being a civil servant, if you do your work with diligence and decorum and you have the big picture in mind, you can work hard and go global with your brand. I'm sure you know him. He's gone global. And from his example, I draw inspiration that it is in our nature, it is possible for us to go global. But I end by asking you a question. Can I go global? Can you go global? What would it take to go global? I think that it takes only a certain desire in the heart to go global and a passion to work hard at it. When this man came from America and they told him that they were trying to do self-government in the shortest possible time. <laughs> Initially, he played with them for a while, but later he said, my friend, you guys are wasting my time. The dream in my heart and the passion in my belly is bigger than what you people are playing with. And I'm prepared and I'm ready to galvanize the resources I need to find the people who can work with me and to do that which we desire to do. And he succeeded in doing it. Today, almost every region you go, they say, Kwame Nkoma this, or Kwame Nkoma that, or Kwame Nkoma this, or Kwame Nkoma It looks like he's been the only person who's been leader in this country. Maybe he's been. But this man has also demonstrated to us over the years that if you can build that clear vision, that this is what I want to achieve, and marshal the resources and work hard at it, chances are you would achieve it. So can we go global? I draw an inspiration from this man as well. He set a certain vision, he put his mind to it, he worked hard at it. If today the world has become a global village, if today we are all aware that large markets are bringing large results, that we can make some global impact, that others have done it and therefore maybe we should also envision and work hard at it, then I draw inspiration from that man and say, if I have that clear vision that I'm looking for that thing that I can take global, that thing that I can make impact around the world with, that thing that can make the world also stop in its tracks and say, Charlie, but the Ghanaians to the day who? And if I work hard at it enough, by the grace of God, I think I will get there. And if I think I will get there, I believe that you too, if you begin to think in that way and work in that way, identify that which is within you and sharpen your blades 
work hard at it build those networks and keep your eye on that big picture i suspect that in a few years to come we'll be mentioning your name on the global stage as having done something great to impact africa and to impact the world i thank you for your time this evening and i wish you all the best